All right, so a while back I built this um, horrifying DS and I walked you through the uh, findings that another team had uh, dug through some of the leaked documentation and found for the um, Game Boy Macro, essentially, that Nintendo had planned uh, but then never actually came out with. Their idea was they would take a regular DS Lite, um, hack off the top screen, and in its place, add three extra buttons, probably not like this, and a um, an AV out so you could play your DS on the TV. For whatever reason, they canceled that. Um, it is a built-in feature to the chip that the DS Lite uses to the CPU, so it is unique to the DS Lite. doesn't work on the original DS, but if you want screen swapping, there are ways to do that on the original DS as well. But uh, long story short, when I went through this, it was very much a very premature project, and it has somewhat matured since then, as you can tell by me swapping the screens on a DS with uh, no software in it. Um, so yeah, the, the, the hack itself has matured to the point where you can just install it on any DS. You don't need a flash cart to run it. Uh, you do still need a flash cart to install it. Uh, we'll walk through that in a moment. But, um, yeah, it works. Uh, as long as you don't need the actual TV out functionality, there's no extra hardware required aside from a few extra buttons. Uh, if you wanted to be really creative, um, you could do something like I believe that Rotronics has done where you wire up button combos so you can just hit like down B or something to swap screens or trigger picture in picture or adjust the opacity picture in picture so on and so forth um, but yeah it's it's still not quite as easy as just plugging in your flash cart running an NDS file and then calling it good but it's quite a bit easier than it was before and I'm a lot happier with how the progress is so let's go ahead and walk through setting up this DS uh, this was my proof of concept, really, uh, but this is a perfectly stock, unmodified, particularly gross DS that just happened to finish charging. Oh, no, it just has a, uh, <laughs> a crappy port. We can take care of that later. But let's go ahead and start off with this. I'm going to go ahead and get this plugged into my computer, and let's go over the files that we need on the SD card. I have already prepared this one um, because I just did this, but let's walk through it anyway, just to go from the beginning. Let me get that plugged in here. <sighs> that port, there we go. So over here I've got folder NDS TV out. So what you do is if you look on Rotronics' guide here, uh, they recommend you download a few things. Um, first one is going to be this set of files in their GitHub repository, this lost NDS TV. Um, firmware patch, just download the firmware manager.nds file and the ndstvout patch.ips. I went ahead and threw those in this firmware patch folder just to keep things organized. You don't need the readme file, that's just this, but we will need to come back to that. Uh, you will also need this particular version of FlashMe. I, in my previous video, I used a different version, so I did not have this on hand. I don't know a good place to get it, but if you Google search that, um, I'll have to, oh, there we go, I'll just move that over. You'll look at that, there's quite a few options there, but uh, we'll, we'll not discuss that here. Um, so 
Once you've got that track down, go ahead and copy that to the folder as well. I have BAA Flash Me, and just to double check that it is the correct file, we're going to open up a PowerShell window, which Windows 11 calls Terminal. We're going to run a get file hash on the file using tab completion. And you notice, I'm just looking at the last few characters, F8D6F, F8D6F, so that is the correct file. And then from there, it walks you through doing a few things, but um, we will need to gather more files later, so we might as well do that now. We will also need this DSBF dump uh, program, which the link they give you does bring you straight there, but if you try and download it, Whatever site this is, it makes you create an account. Uh, but I'll give you a hint. If you search that, you might just find an archive.org upload of that folder, of that file. So that's what I'm using. It seems to work. That's what I have on here. And then we also need uh, Lunar IPS. That's linked right there. You can just download it. I already have it downloaded and copied over to from our patch folder. Um, can't really run it on the DS. I just have it here for organization purposes. And we will also need uh, the firmware tool, firmware manager. But um, looks like the NDS TV out team lost Nintendo history. Uh, it looks like they already pre-compiled it, and that's what one of the first files you downloaded is. And then we'll need some other files, but we'll have to prepare those later because we need to dump the firmware. So I'm going to go ahead and eject this SD. Of course, it's still in use because... Thanks, bud. I didn't run anything. I'm sure it's fine. All right. SD card here. Pop that in my ACE card, and pop that in here. Um, because that's unreliable, I'm gonna unplug it, but I recommend leaving it plugged in. Also need to have the battery cover off for this. And real quick, let's go over something. Uh, oops. You guys saw that that auto booted into my flash cart without even so much as a health and safety warning. The reason for that is because I haven't walked through the initial startup of this thing. And I'm going to do that real quick. I don't think that it will cause any issues if we don't do that, but I'd rather play it safe than sorry. So we'll just walk through that real quick. And you might notice that this DS does not have a working top screen. That is one of the biggest reasons why I chose to use this DS. Uh, the other reason was that it was right by my desk and I didn't have to go digging through my pile of DS's. But anyway, uh, I have already tested this DS. Everything does seem to be working. Uh, once you run through the initial startup screen, uh, two things I like to do out of habit is I like to go in and change the Game Boy mode to the bottom screen. Uh, that's not strictly necessary once we get the screen swapping set up, but it is a lot easier and you can always change it later. I uh, can change the language. I suppose we'll pop this into English and auto mode, I like to leave it on auto mode uh, instead of manual mode. That way, when you leave it on auto mode and have a cart in, it just automatically boots it. But you notice, since we walked through that initial startup, now we have that health and safety warning. If I didn't walk through that startup, it would just auto boot without that health and safety warning. No, no hacking necessary. But anyway, uh, go into my SD card here. We'll go into the NDS TV out folder that I made and we will start with flash me The top screen still messed up, but that's fine. We won't need it uh, To start we need XB XB There we go and then it'll automatically start flashing But you notice the progress is hung at zero because we need to short out SL1 and it's going to be difficult to show both the screen and the process of shorting it out, so I'll just walk you through that. 
Uh, once you have that pad shorted out, this will just walk through. It's pretty quick. It only, it's only like 256 kilobytes or something ridiculous. Um, so it's really easy to walk through. But you do have to hold your tool there the whole time. Uh, it's nice that it shows you what you're on versus what your original file is, but don't matter too much. Anyway, to short this out, I'm going to hold the battery in because if the battery comes out while you're flashing the firmware, you're probably going to have a bad time. But we also need to short out those two pads in there, and I'm going to use my tweezers for that. But I'm also going to trade hands here. So we're still on 0%. I'm going to jam that in there. It takes a few tries sometimes. So you have to get the tweezers nice and flat. There we go. You can see it flash in there. This should be pretty self-explanatory, but make sure you have your battery charged up while you're doing this. Firmware successfully flashed. We can turn off the DS. Excellent. So we'll go ahead and restart it. Notice, now it's booting straight into uh, the game without having that health and safety warning. Nice and easy. Um, but now we need to dump the firmware. We will use DSBF to do that. I already copied that earlier. And here's the annoying part. Because my top screen is dead, I can't actually see the progress. This software runs on the top screen only. It is what it is. Um, if it makes you feel any better, it might be worth repairing the top screen just to make sure that this goes through. But I can tell you from experience from doing this one, which already was partially patched. So as long as I ran the software through um, recovery mode and then twilight menu, and then after running the patch and then trying to run the dump, you know, I was still able to use my button so I could swap the screens around. Uh, but anyway, I did run it. It takes like 10 seconds to run, so all this time I've been rambling, it's probably done. So now I'm going to go ahead and power it off, pop the SD out, and we're going to switch back over to my computer again. Pop that in the reader. Alright. And so now, we should have... We dig through, we're going to have something named... That? Is that it? I think that's it. FWFF6911. Uh, I guess it's going to be different depending on which specific software you have on your machine. Um, what's it called? Let's go into... No, yeah, we're here. Let's go to the Rotronics. Yeah, theirs is FWBAD959. Mine's a little bit different. I guess just slightly different model. But it doesn't matter too much. I'm going to grab that firmware file and the BIOS NDS7 and NDS9 ROMs. I'm going to cut those. And for organization purposes, we're going to throw them in here. right there. I'm going to make a backup of that. Alright, now we need Lunar IPS. We will apply the IPS patch to... Oh wait, we need the IPS first, so we'll select that. Now we need to select what we're applying it to. We'll put it in NDSL. We have to switch that. Just 
switch this down here to all files and then I'm going to select that file there and then we're good to go to just reflash this. We're going to take one extra step however and I am going to rename this to firmware.bin I believe it was, yep, firmware.bin and then I'm going to copy all three of these into my no cache GBA exe start that up and in options I've already set mine oops, not save options, we want fix option, no I already forgot emulation setup, okay options, emulation setup and then under this right here reset slash startup point we want to change that to GBA slash NDS BIOS. I already changed that on mine, and then we will fire up something, anything. It literally does not matter because we're not booting into the game. Uh, let's fire up Peggle. And then it should boot into the system. And because it's booting into the system, we know that uh, the patch went good. Or at the very least, if the patch didn't go good, we can recover from it. If we move into the game, we're going to have problems, but that doesn't matter. All we care about is that, and because I ran this off my flash card, I won't be able to eject it now because it doesn't stop running. Fantastic. All right. Now, oh, I almost forgot a step. I was getting ready to eject it. Okay, so now that we know this works, I'm going to go ahead and copy the for the patched bin to the root. We're going to go into firmwares and delete that and paste that there. I don't know if flashing a different binary will do bad things, but I assume it will. Of course. Oh, there it goes. Alright. Pop that out back to the DS here. Fire this up, and now we want to go into Firmware Patch, run Firmware Manager. It automatically found my firmware bin because I copied it to that folder on the root. We will run that, and it's going to do the same thing that we did, that it did when I was running the Flash Me. Uh, where it's going to start flashing, but it won't complete because SL1 is not shorted. Uh, I guess Flash Me does something where that's not strictly necessary for the first like 64% or something. Um, so at this point, I'm just going to let it do its thing until it stops, and then I'll start shorting it. Uh, one of the nice things about Flash Me is if you accidentally mess up this process, um, the first few bytes that it writes include um, the necessary measures to boot into a game. So in this particular case, if for some reason I powered this off, because Flash Me has already been installed on the system and has already been written to the firmware, even though the DS wouldn't boot, if I hold is it like AB Start Select, it'll automatically boot into the cartridge. That's the recovery mode. No, 66, not 64. But there you go. All right. Now I'm going to swap hands here. And... be extremely careful not to hit that potentiometer next to those pads. Uh, that will shut your system off. If you short that. Come on. There we go. Can't see that. That's my hand. Oop. I accidentally released it, but we got to 72.
There we go. Just have to hold this awkward as heck pose until it's done. Done. There we go. So, a little bit weird that it goes to 99% and then just stops there. Makes me uncomfortable, but it is done. Power it off. We're good. It's also really nice that it can resume from where it leaves off. Um, that should be it. I think we're done. Uh, I've got the firmware patch and reinstalled. So yeah, all we need to do now is actually install the hardware. I can't test any of the screen swapping setup because this one doesn't have the buttons that I installed. Um, but we'll have to pop out the screen and pop in the NDS TV out kit here. And uh, we'll check that out. Should be some good stuff. Um, of course, you can avoid all of this. I know there are a few sellers out there selling um, pre-patched firmware chips. So if you pop open your DS Lite and you swap out the Wi-Fi chip, um, you swap in one of those pre-patched ones, you can skip all these steps. It's really not too bad though. I think the hardest part is walking through the instructions and getting all the files you need. Um, but once you have all the files, once you understand what you need to do, I mean, you saw me, I just did it in 22 minutes. And that was involving me talking through it and rambling, uh, including. Um, but anyway, yeah, it's pretty easy, and these things aren't too expensive. Nintendo did something weird, and yes, this is the Wi-Fi chip. Um, the firmware, the system firmware for the console itself is on the same board as the Wi-Fi chip. So if your Wi-Fi chip is missing from your console, your console just won't boot, because there's nothing to boot. It doesn't know how to boot without the firmware. Um, so yeah, it, it is kind of weird that they put those two on the same board, but I guess it's not that uncommon. It is nice and modular. It's probably easier from factory standpoint, but anyway, doesn't matter. This one's set up. Now we will go ahead and get it torn down and do the NDS TV install. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and end here, take a quick break. I'm going to split that up into a different video, but also I need to grab some more hardware for this thing because this is a disco stang. Um, but yeah. I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.